Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner, and today my special guest on one of our new features, Why I Love Forbidden Planet, is my old friend Ollie Smith. How are you, mate? I am superb, and I am a massive fan, not just of Forbidden Planet, Andrew, but also of you. It's just great to be here. The sun's out. I'm here on my little pod in the garden. I am ready to talk all things memorabilia and magic with you. You are far too kind, mate, and it is always lovely to see you. Um, now, you, of course, are famous for being Britain's, the world's premier wine correspondent, the presenter of Saturday Kitchen. You have your own wonderful podcast, A Glass with Ollie Smith, uh, with an amazing cast list of uh, guests like Sting and Pink, Sir Ranulph Fiennes. The list is endless. But what you and I know about you is that in, in addition to our shared love of fine food and wine, you're also a massive pop culture fan. Huge. Ever, ever since I can remember, you know, my brother and I growing up, you know, began with kind of watching black and white Laurel and Hardy um, on my granny's kind of floor in Bournemouth. And it, it, we just kind of went into a world of our own. You know, the cinema was everything to us. So we'd go to the movies, we'd watch Time Bandits, Condor Man, Raiders, you know, The Goonies, Back to the Future, all that stuff. And we'd log it and then kind of reenact it and then write our own dramas around it. So it was a very natural kind of flow from us being into those worlds and kind of slightly, to be honest, obsessive about them um, to then, you know, reach into the world of, of what it means to remember them. And part of that was, of course, getting the memorabilia together, you know, tracking little kind of props and things that would feature it. I suppose really it's, it's nostalgia, but it's also keeping all those things that mean something to you in the present tense. It's almost like little totems, little kind of relics that you have in your life. So, yeah, my brother and I still now, you know, we collect memorabilia. We, we spent a lot of time growing up heading off to Forbidden Planet and we loved the, the shop on Shaftesbury Avenue and, you know, used to buzz in and out of the store there. So, yeah, it's played a big part in my life without question. And, you know, still now, you know, it, for Christmas this year, my brother bought me, um, went to Forbidden Planet, bought me Lando Calrissian, you know, in his Return of the Jedi garb. He's sitting behind me somewhere, actually, with his with his axe ready for action. Little sideshow doll. Absolutely love all that stuff, you know. So, yes, I'm in, you know. Yeah, I'm there. Can I, can I work? Can I come and work in the store? I love it, mate. I love it. Fantastic. When Can you remember when you, when around the time of of your first visit when that would have been? I think the first visit would probably have been when Will moved to London. So he would have been about 23, I'd probably be about 2021. 20, um, but I remember just going into the world and it felt, the, the, the reverence for all the movies that I loved was absolutely there, but it felt like a kind of a hidden back door into another dimension that reflected so many movies that I absolutely loved all at once. And so many TV shows, but also, styles and, and genres and stuff that you know visually gave me inspiration so it wasn't just you know buying and collecting stuff it's also being in the store it, you know for some people they might you know go to their favorite restaurants they might go to uh, the golf club or church or whatever it is that they do on a regular basis but a big part of my yeah my kind of early years was definitely going to forbidden planet and having a browse i just really loved it yeah i i, I think you're absolutely right it's um the thing about forbidden planet the thing about all of the all of these stores uh, as as typified by the flagship store at 179 Shaftesbury Avenue in London, is that um, it's a complete sensory experience, isn't it? It's it's not just a shopping experience. You know, there's there's a, you're completely accessing a whole environment, a whole way of life, you know, a whole way of looking at things. And That's I think exactly it's, it. it's so much more than a store, right? That's what I've always loved about it. Yeah, totally. And and it feels like, you know, rather than my kind of colourful backdrop around me, you kind of never know, you know, where what's going to come next. And I agree with you. I think the feeling in the store, you know, we'd meet, you know, people who had common interests, we'd talk to staff members, but also you would just come across items that would remind you uh, of, of shows and movies that you'd loved and actors and performers and things that really meant something to you. So yes, it felt like an attraction, almost like going to, you know, back in the old days, going to Two Swords or something like that. It kind of felt like a special occasion being in the store and actually kind of, you know, it, there were certain grail like objects that you would, you know, you would revere that were behind glass, you know, so there is, you know, for, for a real movie fan like me, you know, that this was a way of making it a tangible place that would bring all your kind of dreams to life, but in a very kind of, in a very real way. And then, you know, we'd go off and head off into London and, and talk about what we'd just seen and then dream about maybe saving up for something or, yeah, it, it just, it, it really does have, you know, huge place in my heart for the, for those special moments. And a lot of it shared with my brother, Will. Wonderful. Uh, and it's great to have something you can, I, I, I too have a brother 
that uh, is is very much into the whole pop culture sphere sphere and it's great to have a sibling that you can you can share those things with and, and nowadays uh, my kids are adults it's the same deal they're into all this stuff as well so it, it, it's wonderful having friends and family you can share interests like this with yeah yeah it really i mean i remember the first you know sort of moment when we got into like star wars figures then we got to like yeah. he-man figures and his was man at arms mine was beast master beast man even um, but we were always kind of into different ends of the, the the kind of world as well so i used to collect soundtracks and i still do you know i've got a lot on vinyl from the early years you know i was very lucky i was hoovering them up when they were very unfashionable so kind of original star wars stuff and raiders and stuff that really was hard to get um well it's hard to get now but um yeah and he was more into the kind of the scripts and the kind of the iconography of it and so yeah we, we came, came came at it from different angles but really kind of at the heart of it it's just just the characters that have been created that we were steeped in as kids that we just wanted more of you know we wanted to explore their worlds and at the time you know we didn't have like online as much as we do and we didn't have as many references but we did have a place we could go to reach that a little bit deeper yeah fantastic mate can you remember can you uh, can you remember some of the key things you've you've bought at forbidden planet over the years oh absolutely i mean i've got i've got quite so i collect quite a lot of memorabilia and things and, and some of it's quite you know specialist like i've got some original artwork some concept art for the uh the poster of north sea hijack with roger moore didn't oh, get used no, but it's an original wonderful. item it's, yeah. I love that. It's incredible. You know, I've got kind of one of the, the Star Wars helmets that um, the artist redid a bunch of them. I think it was about 15, 10, you know, 15 years ago. And I got one of those and a numbered signed one, all of that. And I, I kind of got one of the original transparencies from Fioros only, the, the kind of motion picture um, where Roger Moore was kind of posing like this. And yeah, so I got that transparency. But in terms of actually actual stuff, I've got, I mean, I've got loads. I mean, I've got like, I'm, I'm, I've got sideshore, so, I've got sideshow dolls galore and um you know like t he from live and let die they're all sitting around in various places i've got like a you know about 50 star wars figures up there but it, it was for me it was kind of bond star wars that got me in but then like star trek as well you know i, I remember those figures you know and they're again i treasure those you know and figures was kind of where it began but then moved into you know the world of key rings the world you know garments calendars you know the whole nine yards so across all the genres, there's, I mean, there's a stack of stuff. Like I'm sitting here, I can see there's a, there's a Jaws uh, sort of desktop set up there. There's a Roger Moore um, original kind of action man in it. I've, you'll see Roger Moore crops up a lot. I was, you know, he was my Bond and I got to know him and stuff. And I really, uh, yeah, I love all that world. So I guess a lot of it would have been Star Wars in the, in the early years, the kind of the Kenner figures and all of that. And then the reissues, because that was a world of nostalgia that had crept away from us at the time when I was going to Forbidden Planet, the, the kind of the early prequels hadn't been made, um, but there was still stuff knocking around that could connect you with moments from those movies that were really special. So I've got, you know, a, original Greedo still in this packaging over there and, you know, goodness knows what. I mean, you know, it's all it's all knocking around somewhere. But yeah, I, I think um, it's part of it for me is um, the special memories of movies that really had an impact on my life and stuff that isn't available. So, you know, stuff like Time Bandits, which I was a colossal fan of. Yeah, you know, and that, yeah, it's one of my favorite movies still now. And I, there's, there's actually a wetsuit from one of the um, one of the characters for sale on eBay at the moment, but I can't find if it's, I can't, I can't remember any wetsuits in the movie. So I'm thinking it was a, a wetsuit for when they were doing maybe the water shots in their I, Titanic been, sequences. Maybe it was underneath their, uh, I think it underneath was. their tuxedos. Yeah. yeah, but it's a few grand and I'm thinking that's a, that's a lot of money for something that's, um, you say has been on screen, but I, I don't remember seeing that at yeah. all. However, um, it's stuff that's almost really difficult to get. That, that, that doesn't have a lot of kind of, you know, presence and availability. Like, you know, I was amazed that like, the soundtracks of Time Bandits, you know, the George Harrison song at the end is one of my favourite songs of all time. George Harrison, a little photo of him on my desk, he's an absolute legend. And that was my first sort of baptism into his music, really. Um, but the movie, you know, you couldn't get the soundtrack. They've recently reissued it on CD, which is fantastic. Mike uh, Moran has done a, just a brilliant, brilliant job. Um, but yeah, so it, it's, it's when things are reissued, you know, and you find things like stuff from the black hole, um, like Will, my brother, again, this Christmas, he gave me, an, a, you know, a, a really lovely album. He'd collected, I think, I think it's all of the cigarette cards, the bubblegum cards, not the cigarette cards, bubblegum cards, you know, from the black hole. So it's lovely to see Vincent and Maximilian and all those characters in one spot. But it's the care and the work that he put into making this thing and sliding them all in. It's like, I mean, Will and I really, really love memorabilia, but just movies, and it means everything because we both ran off into show business in different ways he you know produces and writes some um, shows and I, I would appear in things and scribble and do all sorts but it all started with that relationship and um yeah for forbidden planet was a huge 
yeah, Kickstarter for it as well. Now, now you, you've touched upon a couple of things when you, you were chatting about Forbidden Planet. Man. And uh, some of these are things you and I have talked about before, but I, I wanted to pull at least one of them out, which was uh, actually, first of all, The Black Hole, right? Yeah. So, totally underrated movie. Massively. I mean, I mean, A, it stars Robert Forster, right? An amazing <laughs> actor. Yeah. Uh, and B, it's one of the last great examples of uh, those beautiful Harrison Ellenshaw map paintings. So the spacescapes in that movie really look like um, yeah. no other science fiction yeah. film. And I, I would heartily recommend because it's I, time and time again, I meet people who haven't seen the black hole. And while there are, there are elements of it that don't travel, that there's a couple of those aspects and just the way it looks is so amazing. I would recommend anybody check that film out. I'm, I'm totally with you on that. And I think, you know, there are various touchstones of space, you know, that we had growing up. We, the black hole was a massive one for me and the space gates were incredible. You know, there was Flash Gordon, those wonderful colour oh, washes when they're approaching skies, the sea of yeah. fire. Oh, yeah. it's just extraordinary. And the sort of yeah. droplets of liquid that they used to conjure it, it looks fantastic. Obviously, Alien was, was you know, darker and, and all of that. Um, Ice Pirates, you know, and Space Hunter, all those kind of spin-off movies from the great success of Star Wars. You know, there were so many of those space gates that informed... I guess the idea of, you know, limitless adventure, and obviously Star Trek, you know, as well, there was all of it. But the, you're right, the black hole has a canvas that is like no other, and it is available on Disney+. Plus. They've re, it's there, so if you've got that, I, I, I'm with Andrew, you know, download it, have a look. It's um, it's it's worth it. If, you, if you're into space, do it. Oh, yeah, for sure, mate. Oh, um, by the way, you touched upon another great personal favourite, um, uh, Flash Gordon. And actually, oh. in, our, in our sister company, Titan Books, we just recently published uh, a really detailed making of Flash Gordon by by the the great film scholar John Walsh, and where, it, where, you would love it, mate. You I'm going to order it. it. Where is it? Yeah. Where can I can I order it from the website immediately? Yeah, is it? Oh, as soon as we're done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm there. Com. I, I, that, you're yeah. going to literally see the time scale, time on the, on the on the purchases like that is absolutely me. I, I remember buying the vinyl of that after I'd seen the movie. Um, and just relentlessly listening to it to try to remember the script, try to remember moments, you know, that the costumes are incredible, the look of it. Oh, just everything about that film is, it's, it's, it's so peculiarly, strangely perfect. You know, there's, 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 it's, it's, I remember as a kid, just felt kind of a bit, bit weird, you know, the yes, costumes absolutely. were just like dynamic, like nothing else. And, and it never, it, it doesn't seem to have aged in, in you know, it right. sits as a operatic, peculiar, self-aware romp there are bits of it now that still terrify me but there are moments that the whole thing from the soundtrack to the direction to the acting you know even sam j jones who i'm sure would admit himself is a is a, is a tad wooden he, he's kind of supposed to be that's the yeah, deal that's he's supposed right. to be a jock you know and it, it works yeah. it's it's i mean it's top hole for goodness sake who doesn't want to watch him <laughs> I, know, I know right oh, it's, 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 it's so me girl what oh, it's so yeah. it's so wonderful it's its own beautiful <laughs> artifact right because yeah in the same way that the uh, the the sixty six like the sixties Batman show, it's exactly yes. Batman sixty six is exactly the same thing. It sits it sits in its own category, which nothing else can ever equal, and and that's the same with Flash Gordon. No, it, it doesn't, if they make another great like Flash movie in future, that's cool. And there's all the great old Buster Crab serials, but the the uh, Sam J Jones movie is just in, in a super category of its own. It's not really like anything else. It, it's you're right it's totally unique and that's what i want movies to be and in a way i i'm glad they resisted the temptation to to make some sort of sequel because you have that kind of open ending with somebody picking the ring up but i love that it was left open you know that's you know obviously we were, as a kid i was craving some kind of revisit to those worlds but i think you know if they do reboot it um you know i i don't mind as much as i probably would have done in years gone by because i've seen what dune's done you know and that's yeah. been extraordinary how i i, I just I, I finished that movie in the cinema and just rebooked to go and watch it again. And then again, it's a, I, I, I wasn't crazy about Dune, the original, to be honest, but I know loads of my mates were. It was one that slightly, I don't know why it passed me by, but it, but, but seeing, you know, the, the, the meaning of the kind of reiteration to all those friends who really revered the original, you know, they can sit happily together. So who knows, maybe we're in for another Flash Gordon. Do you know who wins the rights? Is it, uh, it was Dino De Laurentiis, wasn't it? He's... Yeah, it was. But that was licensed from uh, King Features, who are the people who, who originally published the, uh, the comic right. strip. So King Features, I think, are the, the actual rights holder. There's an, it, there will undoubtedly be another Flash Gordon movie at some point. It's just it's just a question of yeah. when it's going to be. And you've touched upon something else, mate. So June, Denis Villeneuve, amazing filmmaker, uh, amazing movie. Also, another amazing 
Art of the Movie Book, published by Titan Books. It's just come out. <laughs> okay, just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... just come out. <laughs> Two for the price of one. I'm doing it. I love yeah. those things, though, and I love the accompaniments in it because, again, that harks back to when because now it's th things can feel a little saturated in the run up to a movie. You get so many teasers, so many drip feeds that you sort of kind of are aware of what the movie might be. It, it, the thing I used to love as a kid was. You, you had a blank canvas, you saw maybe one trailer and little cutouts in magazines, and it was up to you to then piece things together by collecting memorabilia, by looking at little bubblegum cards to find out facts about the characters, get the magazines, get the little comics, and, and, and that felt like a little club that you could take as far as you wanted to. So I love, you know, books that then really lovingly go back and, and reveal layers that you'd never have done. It's like the director's commentary on things, you know, I absolutely adore those things. It's, uh, I was watching oh, yeah. With Nell and I recently and just listening to some of those anecdotes. It's just just and and how and, and actually things like on Netflix the movies that made us I really enjoy that because you know so many of them you realize how perilous every shoot is yeah. and it's so hard to actually get any movie you know across the line to be greenlit let alone actually finish being made and then get successful and have a fair shot it's I mean I really this is a I have to really take my hat off to the industry because it's it's I mean it's obviously very collegiate and collaborative it's extremely hard to win a great box office hit it's it's a big deal yeah, it, it, I mean, th there's an awful lot of processes and thousands of people involved. Yeah. And it's like coordinating havoc, isn't it? To, to get to the point <laughs> That's a correct you phrase. Can, yeah. You can, you can yeah. create something that, that's long lasting. I mean, it's, it's, I know you're a great Bond lover. Um, I'm just thinking in terms of other great things that our, our colleagues at Titan Books have published recently. John Walsh, who did the, the Flash Gordon book, he's actually just, his latest, his latest making of is all about uh, Escape from New York. Was Brilliant. That, was that a film you're into at all? Yeah, yeah. It was so Escape from New York was there. It was the thing. You know, it was kind of when we yeah, were growing a bit that, older. That golden John Carpenter era. Yeah, it was perfect, wasn't it? I mean, it just and, and then it was kind of Blade Runner at the, you know, the, and it was yeah. it was a world where we were. I was at the time moving into sort of teenage years, so things were getting a little darker. Things were getting a little more intriguing, but also you realise the world was not as friendly a place as it seemed to be in the Goonies, and it was. There were threats out there and, and, and there are risks that are taken in the name of saving the universe that uh, John Carpenter, what a master. I mean, yes. Yeah, I absolutely love that. So is that book out as well, The Escape from New York book? It really, yes, it is, mate. It is available from ForbiddenPlanet.com. Uh, there we go. I've been, and, I've been for three. <laughs> and it's possible, it's possible that we might open the door for, open the door for another one because I know you're a huge Bond fan. And uh, before I ask you about Roger Moore, you did, I know you went to the premiere of No Time to Die, right, mate? I did. Yeah. I did, and did it was an incredible it? experience. I've never been to a, 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 have I been to a premiere? I've been, I've been to premieres, but I've never been to a Bond premiere. So it was, for me, it was incredible. I was I was there as a, a guest of Champagne Bollinger, which was an absolute thrill. You know? So, you know, a, you know, a, a super lucky to do that as, yeah. a, as a movie fan. Great to see the cast all lined up and to feel that sense of occasion, like we're the first to see it. What an absolute honour it was to sort of be in that room. So I'll never forget that. That was great. The movie itself, um, there were things I enjoyed. There were things that I, I felt overall when I came out of it, I felt that there'd been, um, there'd been so many things that were central to Bond and I won't reveal spoilers just in case, cause I know it's frustrating if you do, but there were th so many things that were, um, I guess, you know, the dismantled is probably the, a, a good yeah. way of putting it. Deconstructed. Um, yeah. De deconstructed exactly there was so much of that and I, i'm all for that i think that's really important to move franchises on and to recreate things and give a fresh start and all of that and there were some great things that absolutely needed to be addressed and, and hadn't been for a long period of time so to see it brought up was good i felt there was just so much of it that i came out of the movie and i, I hadn't had time to metabolize all of it so therefore i didn't feel i quite digested the story so while my family absolutely loved it when they saw it and they thought it was like superb i was there with my more kind of fan analytical hat on and i think it'll be the second and third times when i see it when i'll be able to sort of take it all on a bit more because there was just so much to to, to soak up and um i'm really happy though that i think we've got a chance now to, to take Bond into a, in a completely fresh direction. I'll be intrigued to see what they do. And I think it would be really key getting the right team to deliver the next Bond as well, both um, on the page, in person. Um, I, I think they've got every chance of doing a fantastic job. Um, I just think, yeah, just throw your arms around the world and, and just take, take, Bond, take Bond somewhere we haven't seen before. That's all I'd ask. No, I, I, I completely agree. I think uh, on your mission to fully absorb No Time to Die, something that might be useful 
is Titan Books, the making of No Time to Die. <laughs> Four. <laughs> yeah. I'm there. It yeah. would be. And I love the making of books. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I used to collect, actually. I recently did a show on the BBC called Between the Covers, which is a, a, a book show. And uh, one of the things they asked me if I'd be embarrassed to be seen reading out and about. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, it would probably be all the novelizations of the movies that I collected as a kid. Because, again, you couldn't go and see, you know, once it was out of the cinema, it was like a year until it came out on VHS, if you were lucky. And before that, there was no VHS. So the novelizations of the books, I've got Ghostbusters, Condor Man, I've got, I've got so many, I just loved them. So, yeah, any kind of making of. I, mean, I think I've got the making of Raiders, actually, as well. I just oh, I've got that one, that, too. That, that's yeah. a great one. The, the, Terry I, Leonard, what a yeah, stuntman yeah, he was. Yeah, 100%. Whoa. That's, that's a great book. Have you ever have yeah. you ever read the uh, the making of Superman the movie? Have you got no. that one? That no, one's, I... that one's that one's great. If you what track that down on eBay, it's definitely worth getting hold of because um, five. I'll do that. That's the, the only one you're not like, selling me. Was I know sadly because <laughs> we, yeah, it, but the writer is hunkered down with the production and it's unusually candid. So so basically, he sees everything happen and and there's there's a lot of stuff in it that you wouldn't get in a contemporary making mm. of. Like, yeah, and I think the closest the closest I've got to that is the gatefold um, soundtrack on vinyl. Where, where I used to pour over it for the photos. It's beautifully done. Yeah. And then you know, putting the record on as a kid and hearing that bump, but a 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 bump. I mean, you literally now I'm like, oh my word! It is yes, I will totally be digesting that Mate, and getting I, that. I have that double gatefold album as well, and uh, yes, and I also have the. Uh, the picture disc single of that theme that came out, seven inch single, no and it's that classic shot of of uh, Reed flying towards the camera on the picture. Yeah, disc. yeah, he was wonderful. I I really was so sad was he so was taken great. from us so um so abruptly. It was a, a really horrific that it was a, a jolt because it was it was one of the he was so iconic and so strong physically, but also really underrated i feel as an actor you know and i'm, I'm not going to go into that too totally hard for some, so, somewhere in time which i do really love but we're not going to talk about that now i secretly yeah, love that yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a great. lovely idea so um anytime travel i'm in for it but but i i think that you know you just look at him in even in still shots with the glasses on as clark he his, his physicality the way he presents himself he, he he weirdly is a different person and then when he's got the costume on totally different and a yeah. genius physical performance in real comedy real timing his clumsiness is so so good i really miss that guy and I, I think he would have gone on to do extraordinary things like christopher Plummer did as an older actor if 100%. he'd endured so yeah, yeah. sorry sorry he, he, he was I, i'm taken, so sorry. very sorry he's gone too i mean yeah he's the, gone yeah. the moments of physical transformation in uh there's the bit after the date with lois lane where he almost tells yeah. her yeah yeah Superman, yeah and he kind of takes off his glasses, stands with good lows or somewhere I need to tell you, and then he decides against it. And you see him become Superman, then retreat back into being Clark. Just yeah. amazing. That, exactly that, exactly. That. A lot of it's behind the eyes, the confidence, the yes. warmth. Um, oh yeah, and his dad in that, what an actor he was. I don't really know much about that actor, but I remember when he, he succumbs to his uh, heart failure, I just even now I can become barely watch that scene. It's, oh, Glenn it's Ford, a, yeah. Is it Glenn well, Ford? Yeah, yeah Glenn yeah, Ford. Yeah. You know, one of the one of the great uh, American movie actors of the uh, of the fifties. Yeah, yeah, I don't, and, I don't, uh, I don't it, know. He's, so in well. the, he's in the he's in the famous uh, noir uh, Gilda with um, Rita Hayworth. Yeah, he's in that. And uh, this is my homework. I love yeah, this. This yeah, is why and, we talk. This is why we talk, Andrew, because right, you give oh, me man. things that I don't know. I love this. <laughs> it's a, the never ending and, story. And he's, that is a brilliant film, and he's in a classic Western called The Sheep Man. The Sheep Man. Oh, I don't know that one either. About That's a guy who ends up, uh, ends up farming sheep in a, in a, in a, in a cow community, a cattle community, and the havoc that brings with it. And it's, it's, it's much more intriguing than I'm making it sound. Two I'm, great totally, I'm literally writing it down as we speak. I love this, but you can remind me after send me a little text. Of course or something. But yeah, of course brilliant. Will, I need, yeah. I need the list. I basically want to download your brain and just, you know, <laughs> everything that you recommend I'll go and do. Um, but this is the joy of it, isn't it? It's the absolute yeah. love of, of things that we've seen in the past that we let, we, we guard and we, we, we cherish, but also it's, it's unfolding right now. There are so many great movies that are coming out that are, you know, out there is so many, there's so much telly now. I mean, you know, we could talk about the Mandalorian and Boba Fett interesting I, i've got a few things to say about boba fett i was a big fan of the um of the kind of the concept of the book of boba fett but i, I, yeah. I quite i quite 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 like the um the first episode but yeah and again i don't want to reveal too many spoilers i i tell you what i will reduce my criticism to this the the actor is is fine he's not the greatest actor in the world but he doesn't need to be it's not that but his teeth are so white 
and the rest of his body is so weather beaten and burnished. I'm like, did somebody not think just to go, either Boba Fett is a real neat freak on his teeth yeah. or he's had his teeth done. Or, or uh, to di- weird. Dial down the Hollywood teeth a bit. Dial it down a wee bit. It just, it may just be me, but it distracts me somewhat from the plots. <laughs> did you like the Mandalorian? I thought it was one of the greatest things that's happened to me in adult life, to be honest. Yeah, I really <laughs> yeah. did. Um, yeah, again, what a brilliant soundtrack that is also. Uh, oh, yes, the I... soundtrack's amazing. What the, oh, the, 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 the sub... Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh. It's, it, the way it's so influenced by Spaghetti Western Clint. things. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's, t- the whole thing was genius. The bass. It, 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 but it's set... What a cool straight to make that the thing. And also the artwork at the end was basically the world we're describing. It's like the extra stuff, you know, through the credits that that reveals a kind of an intent and a style that influences the work but isn't the work and i love all that it's like you know the lord of the rings animation movie the bakshi movie there were so many things around that you know like calendars i would collect and any kind of um opportunity to reach that bit deeper but yeah the mandalorian everything i I basically think is kind of the flawless iteration it was what i wanted from the prequels um and, and i'm just so glad that john favreau has done that you know i really would love to say thank you to him and everybody who worked on it because yeah. it's a job well done and it shows that actually star wars it's not over yet. You know, there've been yeah. some hits, there've been some, there've been too many misses, let's, let's be honest, but, but it's, it's not quite over. And I think, you know, I, I, this is why with Boba Fett, I'm a bit like, oh, I just, yeah. it, it, it could, it's, I'm reserving judgment because we're, we're early days, but yeah, the, to get the teeth sorted out for goodness sake. Come on. <laughs> and I think you've touched upon a towering figure within contemporary pop culture who's actually John Favreau because John yeah. Favreau has not only managed to completely reinvent Star Wars and find a new path for Star Wars yeah. um, with The Mandalorian. But of course, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, did the same thing with Marvel. The, the current yeah. Mar- the, Mar- the Marvel Cinematic Universe is all down to the work that John Favreau yeah. did on Iron Man, yeah. which was unbelievable. And it's, it, it's, it, it's incredible. I'm a huge fan of, of, of all of the Marvel work at the moment, although The Eternals was absolute tripe, I will say. But other than The Eternals... Um, <laughs> did you see No Way flawless. Home, mate? Did you see No Way Home? No. Uh, oh, uh, 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 oh, the is the, uh, the I'm seeing. Is that the one that's out at the moment? Yeah, I'm seeing it tonight. I'm literally. Uh, I've got oh, my mate, tickets. I'm, you, I know. I'm not going to spoil it. You're in for a massive treat. It's it's fucking wait. great. I ca- I great. cannot wait. So I, I I think what Favreau did with Iron Man was incredible. The the amount yeah. the caliber of the actors, but the real clever thing, right? Whether it's Guardians or you know whatever the kind of the movie we're watching, is that they managed to blend that palette and feel and 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 in the Avengers it all comes together and it works. I mean that just yeah. In the writer's room, that's impossible. And yet they've done it and they've done it with their land. They've done it with style. They've done it with entertainment and grace. It's a movie that, you know, my kids watch, I watch. Uh, I, I could watch it with mum and dad. You know, eh, come on, they're, they're, just, uh, they're just absolutely incredible. They kind of make me feel how I felt when I was watching, you know, Superman one, two, three at the, at the cinema when I was growing up. That, that's really hard to do. Um, yeah, but they really, um, yeah, hats off to Favreau. Let's open the Lord Favreau arms in his honour. What a great <laughs> yeah. love that would be. It would be superb. It would be absolutely superb, let's face yeah. it. And um, uh, you, you, I just want to flip you back to a topic we were talking about before. I know, like myself, you're, 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 a, you're a massive James Bond fan. And uh, you, you, I know you've always been a lifelong fan of Roger Moore. But can you talk a bit about your personal relationship with Roger Moore? Uh, something I'm deeply envious of and wish I'd had myself. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and it, he, there are a lot of fans of, of Roger Moore out there who, growing up like me, would see him as Bond and see him in The Wild Geese and all see Hijack and all those movies and really kind of wonder, you know, is he as, is he as kind of effortlessly funny and, and in, conspiratorially inclusive as he seems to be on screen? That was yeah. what really drew him to me when I first saw Fiora's Only at the Bournemouth Odeon or ABC on Westover Road. Which just he seemed to be drawing attention to the fact that he wasn't necessarily the world's greatest actor, but that you were kind of in on it as well. And we were all going on this journey together. So come on for the ride. It was all that kind of feeling. So it was very inclusive. He was exactly like that in person. He was so warm hearted. Um, and, you know, the very first time I met him, I had I was, I was terrified. I went to record some voiceover with him for a project I'd put together for UNICEF. Um, and I've, I've kind of turned up in, you know, in Monaco, as you do to go and meet Roger Moore. I mean, where else are you going to meet Roger Moore? Um, and I expect there to be like an enormous, you know, army of secretaries and PR individuals. And no, no, it's just Roger opening the door. Come on it, lads. And couldn't have been more charming, you know. And within seconds, he had started. He was my kind of hero for, for the acting and for, for his charisma and all the rest. But within seconds of him speaking about how much he cared about um 
equal educational rights for girls around the world, uh, people suffering from iron deficiency with goiter or addressing HIV or any number of social issues around the world. I realised that actually he was totally my hero, but for all the right reasons, you know, and, and the movies and the performance were part of that, but they were kind of incidental to the calibre of the person underneath who deeply cared about the inequities uh, that, that so many people face on the planet. So, and, it, and that never changed. He was always so caring and, and equally so incredibly funny. You know, and he would say things like, I remember I was so nervous asking him the first time for a photo. And he said, of course, of course, of course. And I'm sort of standing there really, you know, upright and very kind of regimented. And he says, of course, Ollie, you know how to make someone laugh when having a photo taken. And you're like, no, how do you do that, Rog? witty titty sex and then away you go and you're just like, <laughs> it's, it's like it's slightly obscene but it's titillating and you, it's just it, it totally had the desired effect i was like kicking cackling away and we got the photo and and then we became great friends after that and every time he came to london you know if, if it was you know if it was it would fit in his schedule we'd, we'd we'd hang out and i remember introducing him to my brother that was enormous and then my my wife and she would say you know very in my view quite quite cruel things like are you sure he's going to remember who you are and i'd be like i hope so I'm like, <laughs> Then, you know, little things in life, like receiving a birthday card from from somebody who you've watched, you know, in the movies growing up. I can't tell you what it meant to me, but also, you know, the kindness of him, you know, and, and his love of food and wine. Great fan of Sancerre and all the all the kind of opportunities that went with it. I remember having lunch once with um, Richard Keel and Blanche Ravelac, which if you're a fan of Moonraker, Jaws and Dolly. Yeah. And I was sitting between them at lunch and you just think, how is this even happening in my life? This is so exciting. I'm, I'm literally popping with glee. It's, it's Richard actual Keel. I mean, he's he's in Force <laughs> 10 from Navarone. I love him. Um, so yeah, so it was the things that Roger brought as well, but also keeping one eye on the humanity of the business. Um, and, and he never had a bad word to say. He really didn't, you know, he was just so, effortlessly graceful so yeah I'm, i was just really glad to get to know him as i did and then obviously I, I do miss him still now i think of him you'd be surprised most days i probably think of him in some way or another just because he was so funny and i one of the things i wish for rog retrospectively was that um you know post bond he did you know, fire rice and dynamite and, and a couple of movies you know the, the quest and so forth but i think i just think his voice was magical oh, and it was yeah. un underused like you know, audiobooks for a start but just yes. character wise in animation or in you know he, he had I agree with you. such I, presence it, i mean it, it, in with so much quality animation happening now mm. you could imagine roger's voice in in like a, a studio ghibli movie or in one of yeah. the one of the great contemporary disney or pixar movies he'd just be so good in those yeah, I, I mean, I, I used to be an animation screenwriter, so I, I worked a bit on with Wallace and Gromit and Pingu and Charlie Nolo. So I actually pitched and put together a couple of trailers. One was Sir Roger Moore's Spaceman, which Rod voiced, and it was, you know, it was this idea that he was, uh, I think it was, oh, I, don't think, well, I can't really remember the concept. I'll come back to it anyway. But the other one was where he was like a supervillain living in a mountain lair in the shape of his own head. And that was actually genuinely quite funny. If you imagine, you know, all the sensibilities of Ming the Merciless, but in the guise of the world's loveliest man, you know, living in a lair. And, and it, it, yeah, neither of them, we just couldn't, we just couldn't get them away. And we tried really hard. Um, and I, I honestly look back and I'm baffled as to why, because the ideas could have been developed if they weren't deemed to be strong enough, no problem. But having somebody of that calibre attached, just oh, I, I really miss those 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 years when we could have all just enjoyed so much more of him. Yeah, of course that 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 really is wonderful, mate. And it's great that you, you know, we always miss our our loved ones and our close friends. But it's great, great that you had that really meaningful relationship with him. What a yeah. lovely what a lovely uh, event yeah. to have in your life, mate. You know, yeah, it really... does stand out. Thanks, man. It it, yeah. it was yeah, it was. I just wish you could have. You know, and all the people you know watching who who similarly like him. It's just like, oh, I just oh, mate, wish you yeah. could have had the moment because it's it, it's exactly <laughs> yeah. as you would have imagined. Yeah, and that that's wonderful to hear. Um, I, I was thinking about other things you know I've talked about over the years. Um, prior to uh, which it, it sit within our glorious palace of popular culture, and do I remember this that you're a you're a big Predator fan? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, my eldest daughter is now, uh, she's about to be 17, but she was quite young. I mean, she's probably about three. And I would teach her the Dutch Dylan, what's the matter? Bureau got you pushing too many pencils <laughs> scene, which we still do, you know, when we meet and we haven't seen each other a bit. And, she, and I'm like, all right, old buddy. She's yeah. obviously stronger than I am. So I, I play, uh, yeah, I, she's Arnold. Um, no, I think it's one of the greatest. And the da 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 dum da 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 dum What terrified me when I was training for the London Marathon, I was up in the South Downs running in some mist. And I had it on my headphones. I listened to soundtracks to 
to run to. And um, I saw that sort of the shadow of this thing. And I genuinely, genuinely believed that it could have been a predator. So I was that, <laughs> that engaged. I phoned my wife to talk me down off the fear cliff. And Sophie was on the line. She was saying, look, it's, it's obviously not a predator. I'm like, yeah, but it really, seriously, I'm running in mist. <laughs> and how do I know? And she was like, well, it just isn't. And in the end, of course, it turned out it was just some cows just looming around me, <laughs> um, which is great. But yeah, I think the movie's amazing. I mean, Jesse Ventura and that with his Gatling gun, it's a solid cast, but it's, a, it's kind of flawless. You know, you've got Carl Weathers, uh, the script is awesome. Uh, payback time. I mean, who does? Who hasn't said that? You know, and that payback. I ain't got time to bleed. You know, it's just it's <laughs> full of genius. It really knock knock. It's just uh, one of the funniest, most brilliant movies ever made. And and again with the sequels, you know, there are moments to enjoy. And Predators, I actually quite enjoyed. Um, Alien versus Predator. I quite oh, enjoyed nice. Predators. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. There was enough, wasn't there? There was, you know, um, yeah. There was a good enough cast. I think when Fishburne came along, it slightly lost its way a bit. But up until that point, I was like, I'm all in for this. This is amazing. And I, I do think there's an opportunity for that. I don't know what the plan is. The last one that came out with the original guy, that was a bit ropey. But I, you yeah, never oh, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the original. Uh, it was, it was yeah, a Shane, massive um, disappointment. Shane, yeah, it because was. it was Sh a Shane Black movie. It was Shane. Shane, Black, yeah. Shane's actually in the original. Uh, yeah, in yeah. the original. Uh, yeah, that's right. And Shane Black's such a great filmmaker. That I know. It was, a, it was a real, yeah, it was, it was really sub, it was subpar for him. It was subpar. And, and I think for all of us fans, it was a moment where we thought we could have really stepped over the line with it and demonstrated it had a future. So I worry. I think I, I, it's not down and out. It's like Alien. You never quite know. But I kind of think give it a few more years, another decade passes, somebody is going to be, you know, it's going to itch enough. Yeah, it's going to be there for someone. I think I think it's still there for the taking. But the original, oh, come on. I could watch that all day long. I just wish I just wish I could wear a red polo shirt, you know, in, in the way that <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, all yeah. of that. Just yeah. and the cigar getting off the helicopter at the beginning. I mean, oh, my word. Come on. Well, that, that's, that's Arnold just playing into his own, gloriously playing into his own mythology. Legend, like, legend. Have you have you worked with him or had him on or anything? He's I, I have. Do you know what, mate? I haven't. I would love to though. I I I I would love to interview him purely because he seems to have a donkey wandering around his lounge these days. I know. So him, <laughs> he he basically my my uh, my guilty Instagram pleasures. Oh, are, have you done he, him for a? For he's amazing. A glass with. No, I'd love to have him on, but I, I I wouldn't know how to get him to be honest. But I might just DM him see if it works. You yeah. never know, chance you're on. I'd love to, to him. He's hilarious. Uh, Silver Sly's hilarious. Oh, great! Right. But brilliant. if you want a really mysterious treat in your life, the the world of Pierce Brosnan has gone to a a, a wonderful place with his artwork and his commentary and um, you know great love of tequila. Yeah, I highly recommend his Instagram account. It's not necessarily what you expect, but it's um it's quite curious. Keeps me engaged. Let's put it that way. Uh -oh. um, I will check that out for sure. It's just, just a bit. It's yeah. It's yeah. It's somebody building building a mythology for sure. But um, Arnie, uh, the donkey. I just it's you. <laughs> I, I, it feels sometimes right, Andrew. It feels like the. I mean, the last decade has been extraordinary, not necessarily in a good way. But moments like that, when you're watching Arnold Schwarzenegger in his front room with a donkey wandering around, you think, hang on. Is someone got a little plug in the back of my head? Is Keanu Reeves going to come knocking any minute? What is this? What's going on here? I, this is this doesn't feel like it did a few years back. Something's changed. Well, that is, of course, a I agree with you, and that's a supremely, <laughs> uh, supremely contemporary reference, because one of the things you and I were talking about the other day was uh, yeah. the, the new Matrix movie, yeah, yeah, which you have seen, I haven't seen yet. Yeah. But like myself, you're a huge fan of the original, aren't, aren't you? I really love the original. Um, I think the sequels um, strayed into the action world uh, and, and sort of lost the intrigue and the mysteriousness that The Matrix had. And I won't spoil uh, the the resurrections. I think it's, you know, it's somewhere between the two. The, the, there's enough to keep us kind of like, OK, you know, it's nice to revisit some stuff. But um, I, I, again, I, I wanted it to feel more surprising, as the first one did, and, and more... You know, and I mean this in a polite way, more nerdy. I think it's, you know, I want it to challenge me. I want to feel like I can explore something I don't know. And I want to feel like I've made an extra effort to go there. So, yeah, the original, though, I, I, I do watch it quite a lot. Every now and again, I just flick it on. It's one of those ones. And if it, it's like the rule of Predator. If it's on, you have to watch the whole thing. It's just you just have to. It's, there's no two ways about it. Oh yeah, it, it it's a beautiful piece of work. It really is, yeah. and and I guess the other film that I was thinking I was wondering about is uh, the Blade Runner series. Yeah, are you, you, are you a fan? Is that something you've enormous? Enjoyed? Yeah, and and actually just on the Matrix, like I, I do a complete quirk. But my um, Hugo Weaving, who plays Mister Smith, is is my mother's cousin. So he's my cousin for once removed. Is it? That, I, I, now that lovely is Elrond. It's totally yeah, yeah. cool. So I remember at a family reunion, we, the Red we were Skull. Hanging, 
He's the red skull. Yeah, of course he is. Yeah. And we were hanging out um, with Hugo and, and the kids were quite young. And um, I think it was Lily, I think. She can't be more than about four or five, but she wandered up to him and went, hello, are you Elrond? And I just thought, oh yeah, she just knew. <laughs> she just recognised his face. Oh yeah, it's his cousin Elrond. And I thought, yes, it is. Um, but he, he's another absolute sweetheart. But um, but yeah, just to go back to, to Blade Runner. Um, oh no, I remember why I was going to tell you that. It's because I was, I was wandering around um, in Hollywood. Um, I was there, where was I? Warner Brothers. I think I might have been there for work actually, but I was wandering around and I'm on the back bar. I came across like 20 Hugos from the Matrix, just wax dummies. And it was the weirdest <laughs> thing to go to walk in and go, ah, just, just <laughs> uh, what are you doing? Um, anyway, yes, Blade Runner, massive fan, loved it from the off. Um, everything about Blade Runner delights me. Uh, um, again, soundtrack, visuals, the first fire going up, you know, the, the memories of Port Talbot and all of that, you know, I, I, Vangelis just delivers, a, 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 the, it's, it's, it's almost like immersing the visuals into an aural uh, way. That's all I've got. Uh, but it, it, it's just that total immersion into an, a universe that is so beautifully drawn and so carefully considered um everything about it satisfies me i love the characters i love that and actually i did i did quite enjoy the um the villeneuve of the uh, yes, 2021 20, is it yeah, yeah. 2049 yeah. thank you 2049 I'm, I'm i'm yeah i need more coffee um but yes i did enjoy that um more than i probably expected to i haven't revisited it which is interesting i will revisit it what do you feel about the uh, 2049 well i think it i think it's a very interesting continuation um yeah but i think if you want to revisit the uh the universe of uh, of blade runner the perfect way to do it is to check out the ongoing series of titan comics adaptations of blade runner so so our, our glorious yeah. comics team at um at titan comics um have basically continued the story on from 2049 Oh. And also filled in the blanks between Blade Runner and 2049. I'm into or, this. Or, it, it, and it's 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 an amazing comic book. It's great stuff. Yeah. Available from the links attached to this conversation. But, I'm uh, totally but there. yeah, it, it's, I would really recommend it, mate. I think you would particularly love it. The artwork and the writing are exceptional. Yeah, these are the things. The artwork. I remember the original, the kind of Flash Gordon comics. You sometimes see them up on eBay, kind of the the, the older ones, like those Hawk Men in lines. Just that they actually they used a lot of those in the the, the credits for Flash, the Dino you know, De Laurentiis. Yes, exactly. you know, all of that is so evocative. So I will check that out. That's amazing. But and joking aside, you know, I, I thinking about Condor Man once again. I know I'm slightly obsessed. You know, but I, I also love Condor Man. It's, you know, it's, so it's, I... It, it holds its place. I mean, I know it's ludicrous yeah. and I know that it's schlock and it doesn't make much sense, but I do think there's something in the character. I'm amazed that as a property, there doesn't seem to be any conversation about it. I don't know if it's possible. Could could the guys at the get Titan Comics, could they possibly, you know, take that on for me as a project? Because I'd love to know everything about Condor Man. Um, I don't know, you know, if that's possible, but... When we finish filming this, I'll give them a call and see. Please do. See, yeah, I'll, see, I'll be, it'll be right my it. pleasure. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, or even just a, a just a, just some concept art. I mean, you know, yeah. I'd I'd happily pay for their time on this. I just want more Condor Man. <laughs> is is it on Disney Plus now? Can you get it? It's you not. It? No, it it's should not. be right. It's, it's not. Be, yeah, it's not been remastered. I mean, I've got it on DVD. Um, it's not a great um transfer. I don't know if it's on Blu-ray. Um, but again, no soundtrack. I've got posters of it. I've got loads of posters of Condor Man. I've got the original press book from the premiere. I, you know, I kind oh, of went to town a bit. I've yeah. just I've got a great great sort of um. I can I can feel a lot of people that you know watching thinking oh you I'd, I'd really enjoyed the uh, Matrix talk but this this really uh, but but bear with me because <laughs> because it just I have such a soft spot for it because it was a wonderful I think it came out in the summer and it was one of those movies that it just glossed over me my grandmother fell asleep with Will and I in the cinema we didn't wake her up we watched the second screening everyone's happy come on <laughs> well you, you may remember on a previous conversation we had about this I've got I've got a long and uh, checkered history with Condor Man. Uh, which I love because when I originally went to see it at the Unit 4 cinema in Wallasey on the yeah. Wirral and Merseyside, love I it. crashed my mum's Fiat 127, yes. completely yes, totaled me. it. And, you told and, me. And my brother and I walked out of the roof uh, of the car, uh, uh, like the Blues Brothers, to oh, watch no. the car then get turned into an accordion because we would come to rest on the opposite side <laughs> of the road. It's, I it's, rolled the car over and it was just terrifying. unbelievable. I, yeah, I, I mean, a, if it would have been in the car, would have been dead. You know, I, I, uh, I don't know how you got out of that, and I remember you no, telling me that, and it's so well, it's indelibly by not wearing linked. any seatbelts, which you're not supposed Ooh. to do. Which oh. a few years later, they were seatbelts weren't weren't required at that point, and we just were foolishly not wearing. But it's what's on that instant saved our lives. 
it's 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 indelibly linked you with Condor Man in, in, in a hor <laughs> yeah. horrific and yet kind of I'm glad that it you know you survived it's yeah. just like oh and we yeah. did get to see Condor Man two weeks later at the University of Wallasey and it was, it was glorious so there yeah we go. And, you, and you mentioned the Blues Brothers as well I mean what a movie that is and talk oh, about man. soundtracks yeah. oh hey have you seen the new Ghostbusters the afterlife I have uh, and have, have you seen it mate yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was, I, I kind of got along with it better than I anticipated I would, yeah. to be honest. I, at the end, you know, I quite, yeah, we're, we're so nearly revealed. Oh, Ooh. yeah, yeah. Oh, naughty, it, naughty. It, it, was, it was much better than I expected. Yeah, I think we can say that, can't we? It was better than, better than anticipated. And again, maybe there's life in the old dog yet. We shall see. We shall see. We shall. I, I, and Ollie, thanks so much for, for sharing this, this time with me um celebrating forbidden planet and talking about your your long history with the store i really do appreciate it uh, i'm so glad to do it honestly you know and I, i've got my stay puffed marshmallow man somewhere that i think i bought in store and i'll, I'll happily you know I, I to be honest i, I can't wait to return it's I, I haven't been for so long so next time i'm in i'll, I'll do some selfies and stick them on social media and instagram oh, and stuff and it'd be, it'd be and anybody who likes uh, you know forbidden planet you know i just i just think it's good fun and we need a lot more of that I, I, that's very kind of you, mate. And I, I do know when we were originally setting this up, uh, you, you originally you thought we were going to be filming in store, and we're super keen to do that. So yeah, I really that was do. I, I really do appreciate that, mate. Uh, anybody, no, no, watch, anybody watching this, I'd just like to say that everything we've been talking about, you can order from the ForbiddenPlanet.com links. We've been uh, all the stuff we've been talking about. They're attached to this video, but but also uh, you have to check out Ollie's website, OllieSmith.com right and yeah, uh, and uh, and on ollie's glorious glorious uh podcast a glass with which is full of hidden delights and of course you'll see him most saturday mornings on saturday kitchen but a, a glass with is is a great piece of podcast work mate and uh, you, you know I, I tip my virtual podcast at you it's, it's oh, great stuff it's good fun to do isn't it and i think that's, it's it's that world of you know just talking to people about things that you wouldn't have expected, which is exactly what this is. It's finding out what people's passions are. So I really appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Yeah. Brother, it's always great to see you. And uh, I you look too. forward to seeing you again soon. You bet. I can't wait. Lunch. Yeah. Yes, we'll do it for sure. Yeah. Take care, Ollie. All the best. See you soon. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, Subscribe right here. See you soon.